Hello, Mount Olive. My name is John David. I am pastor of Shepherd of the Valley, and I get to lead you in chapel today. Uh, I got to tell you, I'm a little sad that uh, my first time to lead chapel at Mount Olive has to be on video. I mean, I would love to be there. I'd love to see all your faces. I'd love to be having fun with you. Uh, but I'm excited to get to share God's good news with you. Now, this is chapel on video, so you're probably thinking, we don't have to sing, yay, or you're thinking, we don't have to sing, oh, but if you're the awe oh, group, good news, stand up, I want you to sing with me. Um, I know I'm on video, I know you've sung this song a thousand times, right, from the time you were a little bitty to today, you've sung Jesus Loves Me, but I don't think you've ever sung it with me, and I don't think you've ever sung it like this. You might know a few actions to Jesus Loves Me, but I'm telling you, I've got a whole lot more. I went on a retreat with a bunch of youth several years ago, and I learned all the actions, and I'm going to share them with you today, but I want you to do them as well, and I want you to really get into it, and teachers, I want you involved too, so make sure those kids are standing up, and that you're all involved, and we are going to do Jesus Loves Me with the actions. Are you ready? Jesus loves me! Now, you might be thinking, this guy's weird. Uh, and I might be, but also I'm a little bit excited. Uh, I'm excited because what we just said is that Jesus, king of the universe, loves me, loves you personally. And so you need to be excited about that. So it's not just Jesus loves me. It's Jesus loves me. We're excited about that. All right. Now, let's start over and get all the actions in. Here we go. Jesus loves me. This now. There are some words that we don't have actions for, so we just hold those words up. This is one of those. This I know for, or for, or better yet, for the Bible tells me so. Ouch. Little. Now, I can't see you, but I've got a feeling that somebody just went little and you smashed the guy. Just because it's a little person doesn't mean you smash them. We don't smash people because they're little. They're little. They're not little. All right. So we got to start over. Here we go. Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so ouch little ones to him be long they are weak he is strong. All right, give yourselves a hand. You can have a seat. Uh, it is so good to get to talk to you today. And I love singing that song. I love singing that song from the time I was a little bitty. I love used to sing it to my kids, and I love it with all the actions. Why? Because we learn that Jesus Christ, the King of the universe, loves us personally. It's an amazing gift, and it's an amazing message, and I want you to keep it in mind in what we talk about today, because what we're going to talk today about today is fear, all right? This word fear is huge in our society today. We are scared of all sorts of things, and we don't need to be so scared of all sorts of things, except for one thing. I do think there's one thing that I'm okay with you being scared of. These guys, not a fan. You see that? That's a big snake. It's called a copperhead. Now, I used to live in Texas, and we were down in Texas. I went to my backyard one day up on the deck, and I looked down, and I saw that guy down there. That guy is about that long, and he is poisonous, and snakes scare me. I was petrified, and I was so scared. And here's what I was really scared of. My kids play in that backyard, right? And I wanted that snake gone. So... I went inside and I got my boots and I pulled them on and I went and got a shovel and I was going to go outside and take care of that snake. And when I walked outside, he wasn't there anymore. And I was kind of excited because then I didn't have to do anything about it. But the thing was, I was still scared. 
because I didn't know where he went. And I don't know where he was back there. And I didn't want my kids going back there. And I was scared of my backyard for months. I was scared. And my kids go back and be back there. Don't go near rocks. Don't go near the creek down there. Oh, oh I don't like snakes. I don't know what you might be scared of. Uh, but in the Greek, uh, the word in the Bible, when we find in the original language, is, comes from this word phobios that we know is phobia, right? So there's phobia. There's all sorts of phobios. Did you know there's a phobia of clowns? Cholera phobia? Who's scared of clowns, right? But there seem to be a lot of people who are. There are lots of phobias in our society today. And you might be able to think of one that you have. Something that you deal with at different times. In our day and age right now, there's lots of people dealing with this one, right? They're dealing with having to put these things on. And maybe you're wearing them right now. I don't even know how it works there. I am sick of these. But we need to wear them right now. We need to be concerned about what's going on in our world. So we need to wear these. But there's a lot of people right now, even Christians, who are just fear is all over them because of what's going on in our world. Well, I want to talk to you about that fear. In the Bible, we have a guy who was afraid. In Matthew chapter 25, uh, Jesus tells a story where uh, a master went away and he called three of his servants to him. And you've heard this story before. He gave each of them an amount of money and he told them to take care of it for him. And he went away and then he came back. And the first servant had doubled his money by, by getting it out in the world. The second servant had done, doubled the money. But the third servant says he was afraid of the master. And so he went and took the money and he buried it and he brought it back to him and said, here's your money. But the fear that was in him kept him from doing what the master wanted to do. See, the money that they talk about in the Bible, they're called talents, right? And if you think about that word today, that's the word that we use for the gifts that we've been given from God, the talents that we have. Some of you are probably really good at playing sports. Others, you are really good in the classroom. Others, you might be able to play an instrument really well. But God has given you talents. And what God is telling us in our text today, that he wants us to use those talents. Uh, what he was upset with the, the guy who was afraid about wasn't that, he, uh, wasn't that he buried the money or brought the money back the way it was. It was that he didn't try. And God just wants us to be a people who try. Remember, you've been saved by Jesus Christ. He's done everything to save you from your sin. And he's gifted you with love, but he's also gifted you with talents. And he says, I want you to use those talents for me. I want you to give it a shot. Go out and, and you know, make a difference in this world. So uh, in order to help us with that, I want us to remember who our God is, right? Uh, we think about Jesus, and we usually think about him as a little baby because Christmas is coming up. Or we think about him, uh, you know, as this guy who was wearing sandals and walking around. And we think of him dying on the cross for us, right? Maybe we even think about him raising from the dead. But I don't think we often think about the picture that we see in the book of Revelation. I want you to really listen up. This is a, a, an image that uh, the Apostle John sees that God puts up on, on his heart. and He gets to see this image of Jesus. But this isn't Jesus who, uh, before, the, before the crucifixion, this is Jesus after he's ascended into heaven and is now coming back. This is Jesus in all his glory. And he has a hard time explaining just how amazing this Jesus is. It says, when I turned to see who was speaking to me, I saw seven golden lampstands. And standing in the middle of the lampstands was someone like the Son of Man. It was Jesus. And he was wearing a long robe with a golden sash across his chest. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were like polished bronze refined in a furnace, and his voice thundered like mighty ocean waves. He held seven stars in his right hand, and a sharp two-edged sword came from his mouth, and his face was like the sun in all its brilliance. It's the brightest thing that John can think of to explain to us just how amazing this God is. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as if I were dead, but he laid his right hand on me and said, don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I died, but look. I'm alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and the grave. That's your God. That's the one you just sing, Jesus loves me. 
He is powerful and he is mighty. And you know what he's stronger than? He's stronger than your sin and your sickness and your shame. He's, he's stronger than the bad things you've done. He's stronger than COVID. He is stronger than any disease that could come. He's as stronger than anything that you might be afraid of in this world. And this Jesus says, I love you. See, that picture that we see of Jesus, it would be really easy to be scared of that Jesus, except that we know that he loves us and he's done everything to save us. It's just an amazing gift. And yet we get afraid. And yet we're so afraid of so many different things, you know? Uh, lots of people are really afraid of dying. And if I weren't a Christian, I'd be afraid of dying too. But did you know that when you ask most people in our country what they're most afraid of, the number one thing they're afraid of is public speaking, standing up in front of a group of people and talking like a pastor does every week. They are more afraid of that than dying. It's a pretty crazy thing, but that's what's going on in our world. And today, I think, though, it might change. I think people might be more afraid of death because of COVID right now, because of people wearing masks all the time, because of what's just going on in our world and how unstable it is. We get scared. But we have a God who says we don't have to be scared. In 2 Timothy 1.7, it says this, and I want you to read this with me. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear but of power and love and self-control. <clears throat> God says, I don't put fear in your heart. I put power and love and self-control in your heart. It's the enemy who works fear on you. <coughs> it's the enemy who makes you afraid of things in this world. It's the enemy who works that in your heart. And he does it to Christians to try to keep us from using our talents, to go and use them to praise God. To go then use them to tell people about Jesus who is love. That's what the enemy does. But God says, I don't give you that spirit. Instead, I give you a spirit, the Holy Spirit, who works in you with his power and his love and his self-control to keep from that sin that's going all around us in this world. God is with you. God is love. Jesus loves you. So here's the thing I want you to do right now. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to think about that thing that you're afraid of. For me, I'm going to think about snakes. All right. But maybe there's something else that, that really works in your heart that makes you scared sometimes. Do you see it? Now I want to speak to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, spirit of fear. Get away from these children. Get away from these adults. You don't belong here. These are baptized children of the living God. And we don't have to be afraid. Because Jesus is with us no matter what. Jesus loves me and you. And our God is good. So, Lord, be at work in us and through us. Give us the courage to use the gifts that you have given us to go and do great things in this world. Lord, we thank you for your love. Amen.